Alright, welcome back everyone. This video is going to take just a moment to clear up a little bit of confusion about uh, a little thing that I've been kind of trying to avoid. It's called uh, the dangling else problem. Now, in the last lesson you'll notice I used an awful lot of if statements. Um, I think I used seven of them. Um, I had the one for negative nine, which was to quit, and then I had one through six. Now, it's good form to, for every if statement you have to have an else. So let's say, like in the last one, I said, you know, sort of if choice equals one, and we're going to say do stuff in here. And then you should just have an else, and it should be null. And the reason why you should have a null else is so you don't end up in a situation like this. Let's say you're trying to make a, uh, a simple quote machine, I guess. You're going to ask the user see out enter a number between, uh, we'll say, 1 and 20. And that's going to be a... Uh, pretty straightforward. We're going to C in for choice. And now we're going to construct an if statement that's a little bit different than what we've been using. We're going to say if choice is uh, greater than one. And I suppose, uh, you know what? I'm not going to put brackets on this. Uh, actually, you know what? I, I will. Oh, and apparently I tried turning on filter keys because I was holding down shift for so long. Um, actually, you know what? That's going to make it a little too easy for you. And we're going to say um, if uh, choice is greater than 10, and then we're going to, uh, to type C out and let's say just something something witty here. Uh, we'll have Doe by Homer Simpson. Um, and uh, that needs a semicolon there. And we'll just toss a backslash n in there so it goes to the next line automatically. And then we're going to have an else statement. Okay. And now my question is, if I just see out here and say, uh, what's up, Doc, and his unlimited wisdom, Bugs Bunny. Now my question to you is, what's going to happen if I just run this as it is? Nothing... Oh, I might need to escape that. Yeah, okay. Um, I might as well escape that one, too. So, okay. We, um, we have a statement here where, okay, if the choice is greater than one, then one of these two things is going to happen, right? Well, let's just try uh, making it so... Our choice is not greater than 1. Let's try negative 1. And you see that nothing happened. Now, that's questionable now. Because what if I aligned it like this instead? And it simply put braces here. So now, does this else work with that? Or does it work with this? Because now, just by adding scope operators, if we enter the, the same one that we entered before, we get what's up, Doc. And that's because now this if has no corresponding else. Um, this is why scope operators really help you see things. And it's very important that you use them. Because just by removing this set of scope operators, it makes our program have a completely different functionality. And that functionality might not be something that we intended. So by entering 1 here, it no longer 
has any output whatsoever. Now, what does that mean? That means that it's coming in here, it's seeing that it's less than 10, and then when it comes out here, it's not greater than 1 either. So if we use 2, we should be getting a what's up doc as well. So again, it's one of those things where you need to be very, very, very careful um, because you don't know what is corresponding to what in your programs. And that's an issue that's known as a dangling else. And they're very, very, very difficult to pin down. Um, there's been a, a lot of, you know, in my college courses involving C++ and Java and uh, the touch of Python that I've done, there's been a lot of focus on structuring else, uh, uh, if else's properly, which is why you'll notice that whenever I structure them, I always structure them something like this. I'll say if choice is greater than, you know, 10, then I'll have my stuff, you know, immediately so it's indented. Then I'll say uh, if choice is greater than 20, and then I'll put another scope operator, so then I'm indented even further again, and then maybe I'll say if choice um, is, um, let's say, greater than 10, oop, and I didn't mean to compile that, <laughs> if choice is greater than 10, and choice is... I don't know, less than 25. And we're just going to update that. Well, actually it'd have to be over 20 to even get in there, so I guess we'll do that. So, you know, at this point we have three ifs that all need matching else statements. Um, so let's just say cout number is greater than 25, or than 20 because that works. Now, then we come down here and we put an else, and we can just have it be a null else if we want. Technically, you don't need scope operators if it's null else, I know. I just put them there because I feel more comfortable that way. I can, you know, just highlight it and see what it corresponds to. Um, you don't have to put them there, especially if you want to keep your program as short as possible. If you want to keep your program really as short as possible on a null else, you can just put a, you know, your scope operators like that and just have them on one line. I don't like doing that. It's a personal thing. Um, so, okay, we have our, uh, and you can do that too, and just have, you can put a comment anywhere. That saying null isn't actually doing doing anything other than telling me or someone else that reads your code that that piece of code does nothing. And again, we toss in another else, um, which is going to correspond with this if. And then we're just going to do the same, make that null. Um, or no, it's going to correspond with that if, I'm sorry. And so that should be fine, I think. Um, oh, no, I, I think I overdid it there. Okay, so that's the end of that if else, which means that I have to get outside of the scope of the other else. There. So okay, that's where this if ends then. And now I want to adjust that so it's just back before the uh, end of this else scope. So I come in, I'm going to say else, and again we're going to do another null. And so that's going to be the end of the top if. We're just going to type else, and again another null. And that's just going to show us, see how it lines up vertically where these else's are? That just shows us where we can do stuff. Maybe we want to put, you know, that's not the case, or something like that. And we can print it out, and you know, whatever. Um, here you can just put the null that you were thinking of having earlier. Um, all these things are fine. But this is just ensuring, you know, visually for you, that you're not going to run into an issue of having a dangling else. Um, 
because like I said they are dangerous sometimes you know you're coding really quickly like you've seen me do here a hundred times because I mean up to this point I've really been coming up with these lessons off the top of my head um, I don't really plan them out I don't plan out what I'm going to say I just kind of speed talk for you know the duration of my time and I try to make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing and so I try to keep my mouse out of the way and you know if I'm making a correction I try to be verbal about it so in this case what I'm hoping you guys have seen is that you know leaving an if with an open-ended else can be dangerous because you don't know exactly what you're going to be writing and having control and I mean complete control over your program is a very important thing so with this um, I think I'm just going to compile this and the only thing that has an output is if I put in a number over 20 so number is greater than 20 and uh, that's the only output I did I suppose I could have any of these have an output and say you know see out number is greater and then 20 and we'll say and less than 25 um, and that needs a semicolon and this one will just say see out number is greater than 10 and I'm being very lazy and kind of quick about this I don't want to waste you guys attention span on something semantic like formatting oh and I forgot a semicolon and so now when I enter the number 21 it's going to output three different things so there you go that's going to be it for this lesson you guys I just wanted to show you um, the dangers of dangling else's and address them openly before somebody you know ran into a problem with one down the line uh, hopefully this has been educational and useful for you um, if you have any questions ask them down below uh, subscribe up top if you're one of my reddit U students uh, this is going to be one that doesn't have um, a homework assignment I don't really see the need for it just based on you know what we've covered I hope hope that it's somewhat straightforward. You can go play around with nested ifs if you want. Um, I know that one of the assignments I did, you know, had something like 20 ifs and they were all nested off of each other and it was it was a goddamn nightmare. Like, the teacher did it in class and it took us like three class periods and nobody came out any better because of it. So, the realistic thing here is don't use if statements, <laughs> use case logic when you can. And hopefully we'll be getting into that in the next few lessons. Alright, well, that's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching.